Hi all, Cindy's Art. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started with our project. I am working on a blueberry project today and I am being very specific as to how I'm doing this painting. And before I press record for this, I had already gone ahead and laid down a yellowish, it's a sap green with a little bit of aurelian yellow. Uh, behind there I use uh, Holbein watercolor paints for much of my paintings. And the way I started this off was I drew the outline of my grapes and my leaves that I wanted to look at. And sometimes I have fresh plants that I look at when I paint. So I am deepening the colors and what you can tell in here is that I am using a water wash around my leaves and my blueberries. And I'm doing that because I don't want the water to run into those sections. I only want to paint around um, those um, um, the berries and the outline of this. So I'm just doing this until I like uh, how it looks. You know, I don't want it too dark, but I want it uh, bright enough that those blueberries are going to pop when I finish up. I like the way this background looks, so I'm going to let it dry. And then after it dries, basically I'm going to start in section by section on the berries. I'm only going to wet one berry at a time while I work on this. And I'm going to lay down light washes of color. You can see I don't have that much uh, paint inside of my pan. I own, I'm using a little porcelain pan. I really like those. I'm only putting a tiny bit of color in there. And then I'm uh, slightly dabbing those on, uh, that color onto these berries. You can tell these two berries, they do not touch. There's a space between them. And I don't want to have sections touch uh, when I'm working on them, you could see I left a little tiny white line right there when I was working on this next um, berry. And while the paper is wet, I'm just working and laying in my darker tones uh, on this third berry, but I'm also going back and adding a little bit more into my second um, berry. So now I'm moving on to the fourth berry. Again, I'm letting other sections dry. Uh, and I'm not wanting to let my paint or the water go into an area I just painted. So I'm being real careful with that. So uh, I keep laying down my colors and a lot of times I'll do my lights first because I want to be able to see where the light source is coming from and I want to remember where not to paint. Then I will uh, do what I just did with that fourth berry that's tucked under a leaf. I'm laying down a little bit of dark shading. I want to be able to see where that dark is. And this helps me remember that as I uh, move into mid-tones, um, I will remember where that shading is and I've got to leave that berry uh, to be one of the darker ones. It just helps me remember where the light is. I'm still using the same dabbing technique while I add in some darker colors in here so I understand where the shadows are. And a lot of times what I'm doing with this is I'm wetting that berry one time, letting it slightly dry, and then I take just a little bit more water and I wet it down again. And the reason why is I want the color to go deep into the paper. I don't want paint sitting on the surface because once I add another color in or I want to add some darker values, I'm going to wind up brushing off that top surface. And uh, so I use a technique uh, that I learned from, oh my gosh, Susan, I'm not going to remember her last name, I'll put it up another time. Um, <clears throat> but I really liked her technique because she had wet the paper, talked about letting that color go deep and then uh, when I add in another dab of water onto uh, the berry that I'm working on I'm not going to drag my paintbrush I'm actually going to dab it on there and dabbing it allows me to place the color right where I want it I'm not letting it get um, streaky and sometimes if you take a paintbrush and you drag it when you are painting uh, you'll see this nice beautiful blob of water and that's because uh, we basically pulled the water 
um, that was on the, the uh, blueberry, for example, in this case, I dragged the water to a place of where I pulled my paintbrush up and now I've got a blob. So dabbing is a wonderful technique. So you can tell I've laid down some of my dark colors uh, just so I understand where those berries are and I'm moving on to my leaves and you can see me using that technique where I'm wetting down these leaf sections and then I'm going to move in to starting to paint some of them. Okay, one of the things you're seeing me do right now is lay down some nice bright yellows. I like Aurelian yellow for underneath of like a leaf or a piece of fruit like lemons um, or uh, oranges. And the reason why is yellow as a base will wind up causing the picture to reflect more light. And it's going to look like there's sun shining on that. I, I really love this technique. So, <clears throat> excuse me, you saw me lay down uh, some yellow tones and I'll use a darker yellow and a lighter yellow. Choose what you want, but I pick a yellow that is transparent, one that's not uh, going to be uh, non-transparent, which means that when I paint other colors on top of it, it's difficult for you to see the yellow shining through it. Um, it, it. It'll be very difficult to paint on top of. So pick non-transparent yellows. And usually you can look at the brand that you're using and look up a code uh, with that um, uh, with that color and it will tell you if it is or if it's not. I use Holbein and on their watercolor charts it will give me that information. So once I have put down some very light yellows to where the light is shining the lightest on uh, the leaves, then I'll paint some darker yellows uh, right on where the darker shadows are on the leaf and it just helps me remember where I'm going. Right now I'm just um, out detailing a little bit of the lines on the leaf so I can remember what I need to work around and what I need to paint because when you're working with the leaf, you want to leave white lines on it. Um, the leaves will either have dark veins or light veins so you just have to look at what plant you're painting and you want to make sure you respect the light. So when I mention about respecting the light, you can see that that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm using a golden natural brush. Uh, I really like these when I'm working on botanicals. They hold enough water in paint, but they have such a light touch to them. I like it a lot. So when I'm working with them, uh, what I did on this leaf was I laid down a little bit of water only in the sections I wanted uh, the watercolor to go. So I left some of the lines um, open, and that's why I have these light lines that are not touched. So I like these paint brushes because um, they're very small and there's a nice long tip, uh, a long hair section on them so I can load it up with paint. I'm not adding a ton of water. Once I've got water on the paper, on the leaf of where I want the paint to go, I don't need to add a lot of water. Uh, I have enough water on there where it's not super shiny anymore and I need to let that dry enough of where when I put paint on it will run. So that's one of the things I'm just being careful of while I am painting. By this point you can see how I added some of the darker colors into the leaves and you can see I'm just wetting down that leaf so I can start to work on it. I wet, I wet the whole section of it. So I'm waiting for that uh, that paint that I just put on the one leaf that's not painted yet, I'm waiting for that uh, water to kind of soak into the paper. I'm going ahead and painting a little bit darker detail on that leaf and on, on another berry. I'm using a very small paintbrush during this process and I'm remembering to dab, not to stroke and pull the paint, but to dab it on which creates a beautiful, beautiful um, coating of the color right where I want it and it doesn't um, spread out too far and it doesn't look globby. So I'm going to continue to work around and add my darks while this other leaf is drying a little bit. 
You can see how light I will add a layer. I like to look at the leaves and see if there's red down in there. You know, what other colors am I seeing that's in that leaf? And I will add that in, but I have a tendency to where I add light layers so I can build the color up and not go too fast. And it kind of makes the leaf look a little bit more see-through. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is more of a dry brushing. I have paint on my brush. Uh, I don't have a ton of water, and you can't see it, but I have a little uh, towel underneath my white pan, and if I am dipping my brush in water to clean it, I am dabbing it off on that uh, towel. Towels are great to have on your desk, uh, right near your water and your paint. So what I'm doing is alternating between taking some blue and dry brushing that on uh, to give it that, you know, how a, a, a blueberry skin will look. It's not perfectly smooth, it's not perfectly shiny. So I'm alternating between the blue and the white so I can just develop this uh, skin tone and skin look to the berries. Okay, you're watching me move into more of the details. I want to make this painting more realistic, so I added in uh, on the berries. I made the little tiny end, you know, the end skin that sticks out. It's got the black on it. I added more uh, neutral color in uh, with the shadows. I usually mix the neutral. For example, neutral is a color with Holbein. It's not a black, uh, like a pure black. It is more of a grayish black. And I try not to use uh, a black or a gray without adding color into it. I just like that better than just using straight black. Um, I think some people do use the straight black, and that, I think that's awesome. I just prefer not to. So I'm taking a little bit of neutral with these leaf colors that I've used, and I am deepening the tips. You know, I'm just... I mean, I'm trying to make sure to respect the light. Remember those little veins, they need to be respected. That's the way they say it, respect the light. <laughs> so I do. And um, I'm just continuing to add the color in. I'm using uh, like a yellow green right now. Um, and I really like that. It's got a dark green towards the tip. And I think that's uh, my shadow green. That's the color, name of that color. And I'm just going to move around the leaves now and continue to respect the light. And I'm adding a tiny bit of like a yellow ochre inside of those veins right now because they're not going to be just straight white. And I might add a top, uh, a tip, or excuse me, a tiny bit of quinodronin red. I don't know how to say that word, but I'll say quin red. I'll add a tiny bit of that in there too because uh, these leaves do have a tiny bit of red in them naturally. You can tell that I finished up with some yellow ochre in here plus the reds. If you have enjoyed these videos, please be sure to subscribe uh, to my channel. I appreciate your support, and you can also find lessons. Uh, Cindy Williams, more artists on Patreon.